Good morning. We gather today separately in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. A reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Remember back when we used to worship here together? A lot of people enjoyed that special moment when we pause in our liturgy, scripture, and prayers to greet one another individually. Liturgically, it's called the peace. In our traditional worship, the peace serves as a transition between the part of the service when we focus on God's word and the part of the service when we focus on God's meal. We greet one another in the name of the risen Christ, offering God's peace to one another. In our more contemporary worship setting, we share this greeting earlier in the service after we've confessed our sins and heard God's word of forgiveness. We use it as a reminder that we are to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. Whichever worship style, it's an important moment in our time together, this peace. Since God has created us to be in relationship with one another, it is that time when we acknowledge that relationship and especially remember that our relationships with one another are centered in the God who created 
and loves us. We hear this reading from the Gospel of John every year on the Sunday after Easter. Often we focus on the situation of our poor friend Thomas, the one who bears the nickname Doubting Thomas. But in these two scenes, there's more going on than the bit about Thomas wondering how Jesus can possibly have come back from the dead. The disciples are together, staying inside, frightened and unsure of when it will be safe to go out and resume their normal activities. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Jesus, always there with a surprise or two. Those words he says should sound familiar. It is on those words that we base our weekly greeting to one another. Peace be with you. The words were also familiar to the disciples. Jesus had spoken those words to them during their final meal together, right before he was arrested. Peace be with you. Jesus doesn't just say it once and then move on. He helps the disciples settle down a bit. Of course, they are surprised and probably didn't recognize him at first. During this first visit, they don't have to ask to see the evidence that it really is him. He goes right ahead and shows them the places on his body that had been pierced by nails and spear just a few days before. Then he says it again, peace be with you. Jesus really means it. He really wants them to know this peace that he brings. But we're not done yet. A week passes, same scene, the group is shut away in the same room, probably still with the same fears and concerns. The only difference is that this time Thomas has joined them. Thomas who wasn't there the week before. Thomas who has questions. And again, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. That special greeting, powerful words. Remember, these friends of Jesus are still shaken to the core by the events of the previous Thursday and Friday. At this point, we are kind of in real time with them. It's been about a week and a half since we observed Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, and it's been about a week and a half for the disciples since their final meal with Jesus, his arrest, trial, and execution. And it's been just a week since he appeared on the scene, very much not dead, even though they knew he should have been. They needed his peace. Both times, they needed to know that Jesus, their friend and teacher, whom they had traveled with, eaten with, talked with for hours, Jesus was with them and bringing them his peace. Because that's really what the peace of Jesus is. It's Jesus being present, Jesus showing up over and over. That's why we give that greeting of peace each time we gather for worship. Because Jesus is among us. And that's why we share that greeting of peace with one another. The peace of Jesus isn't just a nice thought, a disembodied concept. No, the peace of Jesus came first through the real person, Jesus, the incarnate Jesus. And now it comes through the real people in whom Jesus abides, you. Me, those around us, we're 
the bearers of the peace of Jesus. And so I invite you to look for places where the peace of Jesus shows up. You know what it looks like because you share it all the time. In our world, government leaders have started talking about moving back toward opening up. There's a lot of uncertainty about what it will look like. It reminds me of those disciples who weren't sure how to carry on with life after Jesus died and rose. But they knew they had Jesus' peace. We're hearing that businesses will gradually be able to reopen, that people will start to be able to gather again in smaller groups. We're also hearing that six foot distancing will still be recommended and we will still wear masks and continue the new hand washing habits we all relearned last month. We don't yet know what it will mean for us as God's people at Trinity, but I'm willing to predict that once we begin to gather here again in this space, our habits around sharing the peace will be different for a while. Just as we were starting to bow to one another or bump elbows before we had to close during the stay-at-home order, I'm sure we'll want to continue those non-handshake practices for a while. And you know what? That's okay. We're still being the bearers of Jesus' peace to one another, no matter what gestures we use. Jesus is with us, and we still share that peace that Jesus brings. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Open the paths we ignore, O God when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things may thrive. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. 
We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who work on behalf of those struggling with COVID-19. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith, especially Gary Fritch and Ann Wade. Free us from the fear of death, that we may embrace the peace you have promised. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Yeah.